this has to be the fanciest waiting room for a train ever. And actually, here is my train. Hey everyone, Matt from soundrolling.com, in case you didn't get that to start. Um, and I'm going to be talking about uh, the difference between volume and amplitude. Um, and this mainly relates to, um, I guess, the differences in frequency volume versus their amplitude. Um, because basically there is a curve, and again you can always um, click in the description for the full blog post, uh, with a full lowdown, um, but just as an overview, and I'll give you one really simple demonstration again with a good old um, frequency generator, um, you don't hear all frequencies equally. Um, and what this means is that essentially uh, frequencies kind of within the realm of kind of one kilohertz to four, five, six kilohertz um, are kind of really, you're kind of very attuned to them more than you are the higher stuff. And the lower ones, the lower ones get into such long wavelengths that you feel them more than you kind of audibly perceive them. Um, and this is through kind of things like bone conduction, because obviously your your ears are encased in this um, hopefully hard skull. Um, and another interesting point to bring up about why um, we use a tone that is one kilohertz is because that is actually perceived at the right amplitude to us. That's kind of where the, the kind of, um, I want to say threshold, but it's kind of where the graph um, kind of lines up essentially. So whatever tone, whatever amplitude you hear a one kilohertz tone at, that is the most accurate frequency, frequal frequency. It's the most accurate uh, yeah, it's the most accurate frequency to represent the amplitude in question, whatever it is. So, uh, minus 20 dBFS, for instance, uh, one kilohertz tone is going to be the most accurate um, in terms of uh, that kind of lineup. So, we're not only lining up for the actual equipment in terms of seeing our levels and meters, but also audibly, we want to line up because a lot of us obviously then mix with our ears. Once we've correlated, the whole reason we're correlating with our speakers is so then we are attuned to how they sound. And so things that sound too loud on the speakers, you know that they've been calibrated right. So you're able to just mix with your ears as opposed to just looking at meters all the time. And this is, this kind of, again, I guess goes more into why uh, when you ask a mixer at least when I was starting out in terms of post-production, I was always asking people, so, I mean, what, what kind of levels on the meters are you, are you kind of looking at? And that's the reason they're not looking. Um, if they're not looking, they're listening. And it's because their rooms are, of course, acoustically uh, attuned, which is obviously very important in terms of delivering accurate frequencies and this accurate loudness perception of frequencies. And so they just mix with their ears. Um, another useful fact um, about, or another useful tip, I guess, in your mixes is that you can make your mixes, even though they are technically um, at a certain level, you can make them louder or quieter depending what you cut off. Um, often in location recording, you can find that you can actually give yourself a bit more headroom if you do a, a high roll off. So if you, if you do like a bass cut and you cut those lower end, stronger frequencies, just a little bit, like 80 hertz or something like that. Um, and it's just gonna give you that bit of extra room um, in terms of headroom for your mix. So if you find like radio mics, um, because obviously they're quite uh, close to the chest usually, which is quite deep um, for most people, 
then you can just roll them off um, and you'll actually give yourself a bit of an easier time. So I know that that was kind of like lots of nuggets of information in one go, um, but now I'll just give you kind of the uh, demonstration of uh, it again with the, uh, the same old frequency generator. So let's try and uh, zoom in on that. And uh, so this is obviously all playing at the maximum level at the moment. And just notice, obviously, that uh, though I'm playing them all and going through them all at the same level, you perceive them all differently. Wait for it to focus. And then they kind of die off after that. But for me, what's really piercing is, I mean, seven, definitely around seven kilohertz. Seven kilohertz, seven kilohertz to three um, is really, really strong for me. It's like audibly, like straight in my ears, like, wah. Um, so just contemplate that with your mixes as well. Um, and maybe you can even take out the harshness in some dialogue um, by doing some uh, kind of notch filtering, which is kind of where you take um, one bit of the spectrum of any clip, dialogue, or any other sound effect, and you just drop that down. Um, and you'll you'll often find, and actually I'll probably make this the, uh, the topic for tomorrow's vlog, um, just a bit more about notch filters. So um, this actually went on a bit longer than I thought it would actually. Um, so, Again, thank you very much for tuning in. Again, I'm making daily content. Um, I re-uploaded yesterday's one because I did actually sound mix it a bit more after some comments. So I'm glad people are commenting. Um, and obviously, if you click the thumbs up or the like button, uh, more people are going to be able to find this uh, on YouTube, Facebook, etc. Um, so that's always much appreciated. Again, comments uh, in terms of just the general daily content or in terms of a question that you have that you want me to put up or in terms of what's written on the blog that is uh, kind of associated or goes into a bit more detail of certain stuff with this uh, is always on soundrolling.com. Uh, I guess thank you very much. I'll still be posting tomorrow and even Christmas Day and other stuff like that. But I guess I hope everyone's uh, travels are going well. Mine wasn't too bad, although I had to stand up the whole way. But obviously I had a fantastic view. So, you know, you can't, can't have everything. Um, yeah, I guess. I mean, that was a weird way to end that one, but, but yeah, fantastic view, great travel, took me like six hours, which is pretty usual, I guess. Um, I'm hoping the weather slightly holds up as well for some more interesting tests, especially with like hydrophones in rivers and streams and all this lovely Scottish landscape that I'll be able to show you tomorrow. Um, but yes, I will end this for now and I will see you tomorrow.